Hello everybody, welcome to the algorithm course. In this video, I'm going to discuss the quick select process. What is the quick select process? It tries to find out the kth smallest element in an unsorted array. That means we don't need to do the sorting beforehand. And the gist of the quick select process is the partitioning of the unsorted list. The partitioning is done according to the following major principles. We need to find out the index of the pivot element so that all the elements that are smaller than the pivot are on the left partition. And at the same time, all the elements that are larger than or equal to the pivot are on the right-hand side, called the right partition. That means they are on the right of the pivot. After setting up the partitions, we can check the following situations. If the pivot index is smaller than k-1, then we recursively search for the pivot element from the partition on the right of the pivot. The value of k refers to that of the kth smallest element. If the pivot index is larger than k-1, we recursively search for the pivot element from the partition on the left-hand side of the pivot. If these two conditions fail, we just say that the kth element is already found at the pivot index. Now, let's take a look at the way of finding out the pivot index. Here, I list a number of steps, and we will see these steps more clearly when we talk about the real example later on. First, we have to set the rightmost element as the pivot, and then we find out the elements that are smaller than the pivot. After we have found the elements that are smaller than the pivot, we swap them with the elements that are larger than the pivot. And how can we know the position of the larger elements, they can be specified by a shift index that will be demonstrated in the example later on. So when all the smaller elements are placed on the left-hand side, the correct pivot position is obtained. After that, we swap the pivot element on the far right with the element currently at the correct pivot index so that the pivot index is found correctly and the pivot element can be put in the correct order. Now let's take a look at the partition example. This is a situation that contains the pivot in the correct position. So 52 is actually the fifth smallest element in the given array, and it is already put in the correct position. And you can see that the left partition contains numbers that are smaller than 52, while the right partition contains the numbers that are larger than 52. So we can see that the partition is set up correctly according to the previous uh, discussion on the previous slide. Now let's take a look at an example. Now I want to find out the third smallest element in this unsorted array. The third smallest element refers to k which is equal to 2, so the index corresponds to 2. That means I want to find out the element that should be put on index 2. Here we see that the smallest index is 0. First, we have to choose the rightmost element as the pivot. So the pivot is in light green, and then we have to denote two indices. One is called shift, and the other one is called current. So these two pointers are on the leftmost element of the current partition. So they are put on the far left-hand side of the unsorted array initially. Our task is to loop the current index until it reaches the pivot. So we have to make sure that the elements on the left of the pivot are always smaller than the pivot. So how can we do so? Let's take a look at this situation. Now the current index is 0 and the shift index is also 0. And we can see that the array element at current position is smaller than the array element at the pivot position. So 21 is smaller than 22. And at the same time, the shift index is equal to the current index. If they are equal, I don't do the swapping, so that the positions of the elements will remain unchanged. And after that, we want to move the shift and current indices by one element to the right. Now, after the movement of the two indices, the current index becomes 1, and the shift index is also 1. And at this time, the array element at the current index is 17, and the element at the pivot index is 22. So we see that the current element is actually smaller than the pivot element. 
and at the same time, after the movement of the uh, pointers, we see that the shift pointer is equal to the current pointer. So we don't do swapping. And after that, we have to move the shift and current indices by one element to the right. Now after the movement, we see that the current index is 2 and the shift index is also 2. Now the current element is actually smaller than the pivot element because 9 is smaller than 22. And now we see that the shift index is equal to the current index. That means we don't need to do swapping. And after that, we can move the shift and current indices by one element to the right. Now after the movement, we see that the current index becomes 3 and the shift index is also 3. The current element is 6 while the pivot element is still 22. In this case, we still need to check the equality of the shift and current indices. And now they are really equal to each other. In this situation, we don't do any swapping. After that, we move the current index and the shift index by one element to the right. Now, after the movement, we see that the current index is 4 and the shift index is also 4. At this time, the current element is 2 and the pivot element is still 22. In this situation, we check the equality of the shift and the current indices and they are really equal to each other. That means I don't need to do any swapping. After that, I have to move the shift and current indices by one element to the right. Now after the movement, we see that the, the current index is 5 and the shift index is also 5. Now the current element is 19 and the pivot element is still 22. After that, we can check whether the shift index is equal to the current index and they are really equal to each other. That means I don't need to do any swapping. And after that, we can move the shift index and the current index by one element to the right. Now, after the movement of the indices, the current index is now 6 and the shift index is also 6. But now we see that the current element is larger than the pivot element. Why? Because the current element is 24 while the pivot element is just 22. In this case, we keep the shift index unchanged. We just move the current index by one element to the right. Now, after the movement of the current index, I see that the current index is now 7, but the shift index is still 6. How about the comparison of the current element and the pivot element? We see that the current element is 13, but the pivot element is 22. That means the current element is actually smaller than the pivot element. In this situation, we have to check one more thing. If the shift index is not equal to the current index, I can do swapping. It is actually the case now, because the shift index is 6, but the current index is 7. Then we have to do the swapping between the two numbers, indicated by the shift index and the current index. Now we can see that the shift element and the current element are already swapped. After the swapping, we move the shift index and the current index by one element to the right. After the movement of the current index, we see that the current index already reaches the pivot and it is gone. We no longer have this current pointer. And after the movement of the shift index, the shift index now becomes 7. So when the current pointer is gone, we do the swapping between the shift element and the pivot element. Now we can see that the shift element and the pivot element are already swapped. And now we can see one more thing. The pivot element is already at the correct position of the sorted array. So 22 is actually the second largest element in this array. So the pivot element is already in the correct position in the corresponding sorted array. Now we see that the pivot index is 7. It is not equal to 2 yet. It is still larger than 2. So we are sure that the target is not found yet. Since the pivot index is larger than 2, we search for the elements on the left-hand side of the pivot. Now we just concentrate on the elements on the left-hand side of the previous pivot. That's why I just concentrate on the 7 elements on the left-hand side of the array. Now after we concentrate on these 7 elements, we make the rightmost element as the pivot. And of course, the shift and current pointers are on the leftmost element of the position. So we see that both shift and current pointers are on the element with indexes 0. Our task is to loop the current index until it reaches the pivot. 
So our task is to make sure that the elements on the left hand side of the pivot are smaller than the pivot. So after we know our goal, we can start the iteration. Now the current index is 0 and the shift index is also 0. And we can see that the current element is actually larger than the pivot element because the current element is 21 while the pivot element is just 13. In this case, we can keep the shift index unchanged. And what we do is to move the current index by one element to the right. Now we see that I have already moved the current index so that it becomes 1 now. And the shift index is still unchanged. So it is still 0. And we can see that the current element is actually larger than the pivot element because 17 is larger than 13. So in this case, we can keep the shift index unchanged. And at the same time, we can move the current index by one element to the right. Now after the movement of the current index, we can see that the current index is now 2, and the shift index is still 0, because I haven't moved it yet. And now we can see that the current element is actually smaller than the pivot. Why? Because current element is 9, while the pivot element is 13. If it is the case, I have to check one more condition. I have to see whether the shift index is equal to the current index or not. The shift index is 0, but the current index is 2. They are not equal to each other. In this case, I have to do the swapping between the shift element and the current element. And you can see that the shift element and the current element are already swapped. After the swapping, I have to move the shift index and the current index by one element to the right. Now, after the movement of the indices, we see that the current index is 3, but the shift index is still 1. And at the same time, I have to check whether the current element is actually smaller than the pivot element. And it is actually the case, because the current element is 6, but the pivot element is 13. If that's the case, I have to check one more thing. I have to see whether the shift index is equal to the current index or not. Now the shift index is 17, but the current index is 3. That means they are not equal to each other. When they are not equal to each other, I have to do the swapping between the shift element and the current element. Now we can see that the shift element and the current element are already swapped. After the swapping is done, I can move the shift index and the current index by one element to the right. Now after the movement of the indices, we can see that the current index is 4 and the shift index is 2. And now we have to see that whether the current element is smaller than the pivot element. It is actually the case now, because the current element is 2 and the pivot element is 13. So the current element is actually smaller than the pivot element. And we have to check one more thing when this condition is satisfied. The shift index is 2, but the current index is 4. When they are not equal to each other, I need to do the swapping between the current element and the shift element. So now we can see that the shift element and the current element are swapped already. And after the swapping, we need to move the shift and the current indices by one element to the right. And now, after the movement of the indices, the current index is now 5 and the shift index is now 3. And now the current element is 19, but the pivot element is 13. So now we see that the current element is actually larger than the pivot element. If that's the case, I don't need to increase the shift index by 1. I just keep it unchanged, but we still need to increase the current index by 1, so that it moves by one element to the right. Now after the movement of the current index, we see that the current index is able to reach the pivot, and when it reaches the pivot, the current index is gone, and at the same time, the shift index is still 3, because I didn't move it. And at this stage, I can just swap the shift element and the pivot element when the current index is already gone. Now we see that the shift element and the pivot element are already swapped. And after the swapping, the pivot element, which is 13, is already at the correct position of the sorted array. The pivot element is now at index 3. And we can see that the pivot index is still larger than 2, which is our target index.
So we see that in, the, in this situation, the target is not yet found. That's why we still have to search for the elements on the left hand side of the pivot. Now we just limit our search on the first three elements of the current array. So in this situation, the rightmost element in this portion is used as the pivot. So the pivot becomes the third element here, which is number two, and the corresponding index is two. And now the shift and current pointers are on the leftmost element of, of the partition. So now they are both zero. And our task is to loop the current index until it reaches the pivot index. Of course, we have to make sure that the elements on the left on the pivot are smaller than the pivot. How can we do so? We can do a number of iterations. For now, the current index is zero, and the shift index is also zero. And now we see that the current element is actually larger than the pivot element. Why? Because the current element is nine, and the pivot element is two. So when the current element is larger than the pivot element, I can just keep the shift index unchanged. What I need to do is to move the current index by one element to the right. Now after the movement of the current index, the current index becomes 1 and the shift index is still 0. And now I see that the current element is actually 6, but the pivot element is still 2. That's why I can say that the current element is actually larger than the pivot element. If that's the case, I keep the shift index unchanged. What I need to do is to move the current index by one element to the right. That means I increase the current index by one. Now when I increase the current index by one, it, it already reaches the pivot. And when it reaches the pivot, the current index is gone. And when the current index is gone, the shift index is still zero. And after that, I have to swap the shift element with the pivot element. Now after the swapping, you can see that the pivot element is already at the correct position of the sorted array. So now we can see that number 2 is actually the smallest element of the sorted array. So it is put at index 0. Now we see that the pivot index is actually 0, which is smaller than 2, but the target cannot be found yet. That means we have to search for the elements on the right-hand side of the pivot. Now we concentrate on this current partition which is on the left-hand side of the previous pivot. Now in this partition, we choose the rightmost element as the pivot. And at the same time, I put the shift index and the current index on the leftmost element of the partition. So now, these two pointers are at index 1. My task for now is to loop the current index until it reaches the pivot. Now, the current index is 1 and the shift in index is 1. Of course, we have to make sure that the elements on the left-hand side of the pivot are smaller than the pivot. How can I do so? I can do a number of iterations. First, we see that the current index is 1, and the shift index is also 1. And we have to check whether the current element is actually smaller than the pivot element. Actually, it is the case, because the current element is 6, but the pivot element is 9. When we know that the current element is actually smaller than the pivot element, we have to check one more thing. Now the shift index is 1, and the current index is also 1. When they are equal to each other, I don't do any swapping. After that, I have to move the shift index and the current index by one element to the right. Now when I increase the current index by 1, it reaches the pivot, the current index is gone, and at the same time I find that the shift index is equal to 2, because I just increased the shift index by 1. When the current index is gone, I need to swap the shift element and the pivot element. But actually, the shift index is equal to the pivot index. That means when I need to do the swapping, the number is just swapping itself. So the effect is that I don't do any swapping. Now we can see that the pivot element is actually at the correct position in the sorted array already. So number 9 is actually the third smallest element in the array. And now we see that the pivot index is 2, which is actually equal to our target index, which is 2. So the target is found at index 2. And when we see that the target is found, we just say that the search is now complete. Thank you for walking through the algorithm with me. If you have any questions about my video, please leave your questions at the comment section below the video.
If you like this video, please give me a like and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.